Welcome back. I'm going to show you how to control one of these uh, miniature hobbyist type uh, servos. These are the ones you get on model aircraft and used in robotics and so on. It's the standard one. This is a slightly bigger one, but uh, they're all the same principle. And you'll see that there's a little connector and it's got three pins on it. And uh, the red one's five volts. <coughs> And the black one in this case is uh, zero volts and the white one is the signal which will be a pulse width modulated signal so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this my Rio and its FPGA capabilities to get very good timing to generate a pulse width modulated waveform to drive this servo and so I'm going to start by having a look at the kind of waveform that this thing needs and just a quick look on the net and you'll see that you need this kind of waveform it's um, basically 50 hertz repetition rate um, that's tw it's tw normally 20 milliseconds so it's 10 to 20 and uh, 1 to 2 milliseconds width depending on how you want to position the servo so we need to wait to um, vary the width of the pulse whilst keeping the period the, the same, the repetition rate the same. Now we can do this quite easily with an FPGA. Um, this isn't my idea, particularly you can see some of the sorts of things uh, other people have done with uh, my Rio uh, and the um, Rio, but I'm just kind of trying to bring it together here. What we're going to do is look at the pinout of the my Rio and you see this uh, sort of connectors A and connectors B here if you can see it and uh, there's a great number of digital IOs uh, A to D, D to A and so on I'm just going to use digital IO 0 in other words digital out I don't need a digital in I just need a digital out and it's this one here which is pin 11 it's pin 11 on um, connector A if I go back to um, the My Rio connector A is here, and I'm connecting a wire onto the scope to see how it's going to work once I've programmed it. So the My Rio is usual setup just to get it going, but how do you program it? Well, let's have a look at this program, which is here. There it is. There's the Explorer, the uh, Project Explorer. Hope you can see it, and you'll see that uh, it's set up for. There we go. My Rio Tom. So it's connected directly. It's not done via Wi-Fi at the moment. It could be done via Wi-Fi, but I'm not doing it at the moment. And you'll see all the connector connectors A, B, C, and so on. And uh, there's servo. That's the FPGA code. And you'll see servo host, which is uh, that's running on the processor. The processor will um, that's all, that's do, doing the control part, really, the, the knobs and so on on the front of the uh, the VI, so that I can um, control it from the PC. I could do it from the FPG itself, but I get um, more sort of um, uh, easiness to 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 do it this way. So here's the actual program on the FPGA and if we look at it, there we go, you'll see that it's uh, a while loop around it obviously because it's going around forever and then here there's um, one of these sequence generator things like a film strip which means it will um, execute this one first followed by this one in the middle, followed by that one at the right and then start back again. The main loop has got a timer in it in microseconds. That timer is going to be for 50 hertz or that's going to be 20 milliseconds. 20 milliseconds is 20,000 microseconds because it's set up in microseconds. 
So I'll, I'll put a control on the front so you can play around with that if you want to experiment. And then I've just selected the IO0 and be careful to uh, make sure it's of course reading it's uh, reading an input here um, which is um, the, the true and that's going to the output which is the, the, the connector DIO0 so it's setting in other words it's setting the DIO0 true which is the first part of the waveform and then it um, stays there for a period of time which is the pulse width which here is just called servo 6, it could be called anything you like, that should be called pulse width really and then it goes back down to false again which is the other part of the waveform so it sends that out to the connector and that's it really and then it goes back and does the same again so it's extremely simple and of course at the end of the loop it just goes to true that's the thing but the truth the loop is sent on is, is um, goes around an infinity amount of times just get rid of this thing so if we run it of course it would take a while to compile this but maybe half an hour or something a bit less but I've compiled it before and it's running away um, so I've just fixed the front values at um, 50, uh, 5000 microseconds and 1500 microseconds uh, but that, that will change later that's I'm going to change that to be anything I like and if I go to the oscilloscope I should be able to see PWM oops there it is on the oscilloscope there's my PWM I'll play around with it in a minute just this when I get control over it At the moment it's just some basic waveform and you'll see that uh, that's coming from the um, my Rio okay the connector that I mentioned earlier. So what I'm going to do now is put a, a host control onto it so I can play around with that. Although I could, in theory, just move this around here on the FPGA and just leave the FPGA, I'm going to put a host controller on. I'll just close that. And these, anything, any controls which are like these two will appear on my um, host controller when I use an invoke mode. So here, you notice it's got to be under a different, it's not under the FPGA target. Let's see. See, so there's the FPGA target. Just underneath that, we've got the servo host that's outside of this sort of um, the range there of the FPGA. So you don't put it in there. If you put it in there, if you stick this, this guy here into there, uh, then it'll think it's an FPGA code and come up with errors. So you've got to put it outside. So we stick it in the... Um, just outside and this is the the region for the uh, host controller and you can have another one up here for the for the PC itself but we don't normally bother with that so here's my program to control it and you'll see I've got a just a sliding control on the front uh, which sets the pulse width and if I look at the program I have to find the target first that's already been done, but what I'd normally do is go to configure open FPGA reference and then I'd go FPGA target, click on that and I should see the target which is the FPGA VI I've been working on earlier and you'll see it's called servo so that was the one with the, the FPGA one there so you've got to make sure that it's pointing to there and then you have to do use this thing which is um, uh, let me just put the context help on this one here is the invoke method it just tells it to um, you can move this around tells it to run and then I've got another infinite loop which um, all it does is it takes the um, control from the, the control values which are on the front panel of the FPGA code and displays them here. Or one of them I've just fixed at 50 hertz, 20,000 microseconds, as you can see. And the other one I've made a control, which is the pulse width. So the pulse width is going to vary 
and the uh, refresh rate is um, going to be constant. I'm not going to really play with that. And how you, this is a this one here is invoke. Um, sorry, read write control. This one. So I need a read write control. Uh, if I just show you where it is, I go down. I've got to go down to FPGA interface, and then you'll see invoke method, which we used earlier, and read write control. There it is. So I'll pull over. I've already set it up, so I don't need to do it again. But there it is. But if if you click on it, not a lot happens because it's uh, it's not actually connected to anything. So what you have to make sure and do is connect your this this wire here, which comes from this invoke method. That's got to be connected to here. Uh, otherwise you don't get anything and then you can just right click on it and do um, authority is right controls and then for example there's my count and it immediately changes the count and that's the that's the period of the waveform and then I can create a control for example create whatever constant or control and that gives me my front panel so I'm going to delete that because I've already done it. I can add extra terms. Just delete that. Do a control B to get rid of the terms you don't want. And then I shall run this. And I should be getting control now over my PWM. Let's go to save it first. And there I've got a front panel. That's the FPGA one, I don't want to control that. Here it is, so if I vary this guy here, that should vary the pulse width. That's maximum and that's minimum. I'm doing it within the spec. Well, it's supposed to be a thousand to uh, two thousand microseconds, but I've, I'm making it 500 to 2,250. I found that that works a little bit better. I get slightly more range. These servos give you sort of plus or, uh, 90, uh, plus or minus 90 degrees, 180 degrees um, movement. Now let's look at the waveform as I change it. Change the thing here. You see it's, the width is increasing, and then it's reducing, increasing. I'll just change the time base. Not that great to see because it's 50 hertz, and 50 hertz doesn't trigger that very well. There's it very narrow, and there is it widening. All I need to do now is connect this to the uh, servo itself. But I don't. What I don't want to do is connect the five volts from here because this thing, my Rio, isn't going to give me an awful lot of current so I'm going to use a separate power supply here which is going to give me the um, as much current as I require so I may have you know 10 of these servos controlled and so um, this is going to be 5 volts here so I'll, I'll just plug it in to the control you can see it's varying plus or minus 90 degrees And uh, that's coming from here as I vary it, the front panel. I can't show them both at the same time. You can hear it. And that's uh, how to control a small model servo for robotics or whatever you want to do with it. Thanks.